What's the passing score for the PE exam in 2021? And what's the scoring process? In this video, I look at the exam and take you through how NCWS determines the level of performance that corresponds with the minimal competence in that discipline. What does that even mean? But before I jump in, let me remind you that most successful engineers, they will tell you that getting their PE license was the biggest career growth driver that they've experienced. Whether that was due to a promotion, maybe it was a salary increase, or just more exciting projects to work on. You want to get your PE license. However, preparing for the PE exam can be a real challenge, but through this and other videos on this channel, you will learn everything you need to know about the licensing process, including PE exam preparation. Please be sure to subscribe to my channel here as my weekly videos will help you pass the PE exam. And if you leave your questions in the comments below, I will answer them on future videos. In fact, this video was created in response to a question from one of our viewers. So let's jump into the topic of the PE exam passing score. You can find information on NCWS's website at ncws.org forward slash exams forward slash scores, but let's go through some of it here. Most of the PE exams are 80 multiple choice questions taken over an eight hour period, 40 questions in the four hour morning session, and 40 questions in the four hour afternoon session. The NCWS administers some of the PE exams, depending on the discipline, through computer-based testing, or CBT, and others through traditional pencil and paper testing, which is the way I took it 20 years ago. No exams are offered in both formats, and the scoring process does vary based on the testing method. You can see a full list of which PE exams are offered in which method at ncws.org forward slash exams forward slash scores. So let's first take a look at the NCWS's scoring process for CBT exams. For CBT, exam results are based on the total number of correct answers that you've scored. There are no deductions for wrong answers. The score is then converted to a scaled score, which adjusts for any minor differences in difficulty across the different exam forms. This scaled score represents an examinee's ability level and compared to the minimum ability of the level for the rest taking the exam. Now this has been determined by subject matter experts through psychometric statistical methods. This is kind of similar to how they place exams on a grading curve in elementary school. We all remember that, right? The passing grade is related to how everyone else in the class did on that exam. Now, NCWS does not publish the passing score. They score each exam with no predetermined percentage of examinees that should pass or fail. All exams are scored the same way. First time takers and repeat takers are graded to the same standard. Now, in regard to your exam results, exam results are reported as pass or fail. If you did not pass the exam, you will receive a diagnostic report indicating subject areas of relative strength and weakness. The diagnostic report can be helpful in assisting you if you decide to retake the exam, and I hope you do. Next, let's look at the traditional pencil and paper exam. Firstly, the grading process. All answer sheets for multiple choice exams are machine graded. A percentage of answer sheets are also manually verified to ensure accuracy. The essays for the afternoon portion of the SE exam are scored by teams of subject matter experts. But let's stay focused on the PE exam here. Firstly, determining passing scores. When an exam is introduced or when its specifications change, a committee of subject matter experts work with experienced psychometricians. Now these are testing experts with a background in statistics to determine the level of performance that corresponds with that minimal competence in that discipline. This process essentially serves to determine the passing score. So they are really doing some heavy data analytics here to determine what they believe to be a fair passing score, which is good. NCWS does not publish passing scores because they can change with each administration of the exam, as I've been talking about here. And for the pencil and paper exam, NCWS scores each exam with no predetermined percentage of examinees that should pass or fail. All exams are scored the same way. Again, first time takers and repeat takers, same standard. Lastly, let me touch on equating. 
For subsequent administrations of each exam, statistical equating is used to ensure that this level of performance is consistent across multiple administrations of the exam. Essentially, this means that while numerical passing score may change with each administration, you are not disadvantaged when one administration of a particular exam is more difficult than another. This process accounts for the 8 to 10 week interval between an exam administration and the release of scores to member licensing boards. They need to do all this work. This process serves to make sure that regardless of when you take the exam, your chances are just as good as anyone else that took it in the past, even though the questions will be slightly different. Your exam results are determined by the number of items you answered correctly for the exam in its entirety. There are no minimum requirement efforts for particular sections or topics within an exam. You are not penalized for incorrect answers. You may request that your exam answer sheet be manually verified. However, there will be a fee charged for that service. Although there are no set numbers provided to pass the PE exam, it is believed, according to research, that you will need to correctly answer approximately 70% of the questions to pass. That's about 56 right answers out of 80. Now, please note, this is just an approximation based on opinions given by multiple people and websites. It's best to just be prepared and study everything you will need to know to pass the PE exam, which our other videos on this channel will help you do. I hope you found this video helpful. In upcoming videos, I will solve some more PE exam practice problems and answer other questions from our subscribers. Pass the PE exam videos will publish weekly, so please be sure to click the subscribe button so you don't miss something that could make a substantial difference in your exam result. And please, ask questions and leave comments below this video and I will respond to you and let me know if there's a specific topic you'd like me to cover or a specific question that you need answered. Pass the PE exam will have you covered. I'll see you next week on Pass the PE exam.